watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. And today from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the home of the defending champions, LSU draws a stiff early round test. They take on upset-minded Middle Tennessee in front of a packed house at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. Now the winner moves on to Albany in the region that has been called the murderer's row of the tournament. Middle Tennessee with the upset of the first round knocking off the number six seed Louisville. Moments ago, Blue Raiders head coach Rick Ensel with thoughts of a monumental upset in his locker room prior to tip off. Well, they got everything in their favor. They're playing in front of their crowd. They're playing in their gym. They've got the pressure on them. Hey, getting back, getting back, getting back. Now we're back. You don't go out there and be nervous. I don't care how loud they get. You don't go out there and be nervous. I don't know how, how many shots they hit in a row. Don't worry about it. Just like the other day, do our thing. There's no secret formula. They're just like y'all. They got up this morning. Some of them didn't sleep last night. Some of them did because they probably didn't think y'all were worthy of being here. Well, let me tell you something. We're worthy of being here. They hadn't gone through what we've gone through. They're going to write books about you. Your granddaughter's going to be able to check it out in the library one day and read about you. You got me? Go finish this thing up. Let's go. Christy Thomas, Cuddy, Dave O'Brien, thanks much for joining us here in Baton Rouge. And LSU played an ugly game in a win on Friday. They turned it over 24 times. There's the off-court controversy, the Washington Post story that is pending. Given all of that, they're also taking on a Middle Tennessee team that is a handful for any champion. Well, the good news, if you're an LSU fan, they look locked in at practice yesterday because this is a Middle Tennessee team that's really stingy on defense, 10th in the country in scoring defense, and they're averaging nine made threes a game. Let's talk some Angel Reese, our Xfinity go-to player here today. And she had 19 rebounds, but only made one shot, one field goal in round one. And that's an example of the impact Angel Reese can have on a game. 24 double-doubles on the season. She is first in offensive rebounds. She is so good when she can get out and transition because it creates easy scoring opportunities for this veteran player. Angel Reese just outstanding throughout the season as the SEC Player of the Year. Trying to get back to her standard here in round number two. Now, Savannah Wheeler was really, really good in the second half in that round one victory. First half, only two points. Second half, they needed all 20, and she delivered. If you don't know about Savannah Wheeler, get comfortable with because this is a dynamic point guard, a three-level scorer. And why is she so good? She has the ability to create such great separation off the dribble. You see it right there, almost five feet of space with that step back move. She is undersized at only 5'6", but it doesn't matter because of that step back. Different play, same result, creates the space, knocks down the three. She hits a couple of shots from the outside, and then she's able to turn the corner, pull up jumper, or get to the rim, get used to seeing a lot of the high ball on screen action for Savannah Wheeler here this afternoon. Conference USA Player of the Year, Savannah Wheeler. Now, time for our Dick Sporting Goods need to know. We go right to the source here. Rick Ensel's bedazzled three-year-old granddaughter, Evie, with Blue Raiders guard, Jalen Gregory. So, Evie, what do we have to do to win tonight? Stretching really good and rebounding. Is that what we're going to do? Yes. 23 years old is all about getting on that airplane, but you got to get the stretching in first. And she really feels like she is a part of this basketball team. And every one of the players and coaches obviously adore her. And she is here for the big time show in Baton Rouge. And this place should be rocking for LSU, the number three seed. And the Blue Raiders, the number 11 seed, Middle Tennessee, they went 20 in a row. Wheeler, 2,000 career points. Boulder Reba is the shot blocker. Courtney Whitson, very good rebounder. And Scott Gregory will be huge today. Our Capital One starting lineups for LSU, Angel Reese. Also, Morrow combining for 35 and 23. Van Litt, Williams, and Johnson, all capable of big games. The Tigers are deeper, more athletic. But again, it's 20 consecutive victories for Middle Tennessee as LSU in the white wins the opening tip. 
And you're going to see a lot of icing of the wing on ball screens by Middle Tennessee. Player to player for the most part in this game. Johnson will airmail the first shot. Lajay Johnson out of the corner. And get used to seeing these Blue Raiders because every one of them is going to play almost 40 minutes today. Wheeler's first one off the mark. 5-6 grab with the first shot for the Blue Raiders. They have been winning on defense. And a quick whistle here, holding opponents to just 55 points a game. Tim Mulkey, 23rd year as a head coach, and after the turnover played win in round one, she said that was not the same team we had on the floor in the SEC championship game. I think anybody who's followed LSU for the last month and a half had seen them building, building. And that's why Friday's performance was such at a loss of words because they took such a step back. But I saw a team locked in, ready to prove that that was the fluke, and their NCAA tournament ready. So yeah, Wheeler with the ball here. She played all 40 minutes on Friday. One of two Blue Raiders who did. Getting it off for Whitson. Tried to dump it downstairs to the big. Shot clock down to eight. And here's Gregory, who really was their first step star. She had 24 points in the game. Has to flip it up there at the shot clock expiring, and it never did touch the iron. So that is a shot clock violation. And Rick Insel in his 19th year for Middle Tennessee. Chris's his granddaughter has stolen the show here in Baton Rouge, but his team did on Friday. His first tournament win since 2007. And Rick Insel's a Hall of Famer as well, and he is so good in terms of this system. Everyone knows what's coming. It's can you stop it. And right now, can you stop Anissa Morrow off the bounce? First team all SEC. 15.7 rebounds, three steals on Friday, so she played a solid game individually. Wheeler going airborne and will knock that one down. First one's for Savannah Wheeler today. 2,000 point scorer in her outstanding career. Morrow with a turn, gets it to go, and she's off to a quick start. We talked about Reese and Wheeler in the open, but that's the matchup I'm eager to see on both ends of the floor. Morrow versus Whitson. Whitson obviously will face up a lot more, but can Whitson keep Morrow from scoring in the half court? Uh, Wheeler on the drive, off the window. Rick Insel said before yesterday's practice, they cannot afford to get off to a slow start. That has plagued Middle Tennessee. It did the other day against Louisville, although they came from 18 down. All of their games in the Conference USA Tournament, they started slow. They started slow on Friday, and he knows LSU is too good here in the PMAC to dig a, dig a deficit here early. So it'll be Blue Raider ball here, not at four. And Nisa Mara, and this is the matchup. She is so good off the high post. And Kim Mulkey said yesterday she wants her begs to get it, get aggressive, and look to get to the rim. Junior from Australia, the 5'11", last here, Paul in the game. Recovering quickly from a concussion a couple of weeks ago. LSU crashing the glass as they do so well. And here's Poe. Got a great standing ovation yesterday as she entered the game. She said it really touched her. No foul as she drove the lane. And here comes Wheeler in transition. Off to Scott. And she'll knock down the three. To Mia Scott, it makes 37%. And that's the key for Middle Tennessee. Transition defense. And if they can get stops, they're going to get out and try to score quickly in transition. That's a good pass underneath. And the finish by Angel Reese. And she'll be going to the line. And again, only 10 points for her on Friday. But she was tremendous on the glass with 19 rebounds. Stop with a personal. Well, she wanted to establish the paint points here. And this is Angel Reese jumping into Scott to draw that foul and get the and one opportunity. Angel, 2,000 points, 1,300 career rebounds. And that one will roll off the iron. She left the free throw there early instead of staying with it. Boy, they shoot a lot of foul shots. That is a huge part of the Tiger attack. They shot 31 in round one against Rice, a 10-point win. But they think average 27, and a big part of that is Angel Reese, as we've already seen early in this game. Gregory left open, can't hit it. Rebound comes out high. Bajay Johnson on the spin. Going to keep on driving. Laid it up and in. She just kept on moving. Flaget was one player for LSU. Played very well against Rice. And she played 39 minutes. 
Here's Wheeler. Rebound comes out high. The last tier pull. LSU looking for their 30th win. Middle Tennessee already there at 30 and 4. Quase Johnson is the best player in LSU's lineup in transition there. If you don't get in front of her, she will take it coast to coast, as we just saw. She's coming off 14 points and four assists. Down low, Williams with the follow-away, and now a rattle home. SEC freshman of the year to make it 10-7. Well, I've already seen five of the points by LSU are exactly what LSU worked on yesterday in practice, trying to take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one mismatches that they have in the half court. Richardson misfiring on a three. For the Blue Raiders, they would much rather shoot a three than a layup. Coach Hinsel talks about that all the time. That's in their DNA. Morrow will lift. And that's well short. Well, Dave, your point about what Middle Tennessee wants on offense, they broke from all their reps yesterday what they were going through from the scouting court perspective and he said i only want to see free throws and threes put up the raiders the 11 seed and the foul here with 507 to go in the first last year ball with the foul number one middle tennessee can say we have not lost this year <laughs> they have not lost since december 30. 20 in a row Inbounded for Gregory. Scott trying to make a move. Good defense by Marla getting her hand in there, but it comes back to Middle Tennessee. Shot clock down to seven. Wheeler sees that. She'll fire it and can't connect. And Angel Reese in for the rebound. Unless you're looking to build on the lead. She'll swoop in, but can't get it to go. Morrow really fighting for that rebound. She'll draw the foul. On the reach in by the Blue Raiders. 4.36 left in quarter number one. LSU with the 10-7 lead on Middle Tennessee. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Let's check out how they're fueling the run. Brought to you by Wendy's. Now this is an LSU team absolutely on fire. An absurd display from Team Angel Reese has come to play. Trying to take LSU to the finish line. Cool going for the dagger. You bet. Kim Mulkey knows the celebration is imminent. LSU has captured its It since UConn, the defending champs since 2017. Last repeat, Connecticut, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Kim Mulkey showing up. Not in a modest outfit today, like <laughs> yesterday. Oh, the inbounds and a quick strike there by Flage Johnson. So that's an 8-0 run. They have message received by these LSU players. They are so locked in compared to what we saw on Friday on both ends of the floor so far in this game. Courtney Whitson with a bounce for Wheeler. And that'll go the other way, an offensive. Well, LSU went through a lot of out of bounds plays yesterday because they knew they were taller. They wanted their bigger guards as well as their post to get touches near the basket. That time, play was executed to perfection for the two. Bola Reba with her second foul, so the 6'6 junior from Moscow goes to the bench. And that is a serious loss for the Blue Raiders. One and done for Angel Reese. And here comes Wheeler. Wheeler steps into a long line. He can't hit it. One thing I'm looking for from LSU today is to get back to running in transition. Their pace was really slow. Big part of that, the turnovers, obviously, on Friday. But even that time, shallow outlets. Get it out and run. Michaela Williams got a clean look out of the corner. Couldn't knock it down. Wheeler wants to push the tempo every time down and then kick out for that three. And then Middle's very comfortable to work the shot clock late. They want to run 
LSU off a ton of screens, especially the freshman, Michaela Williams, and try to get open looks. That one clangs away right tomorrow. The DePaul transfer, who has been outstanding this season for Kim Mulkey, into the double, and a tie-up on the play, and the possession arrow belongs to Middle Tennessee. You have probably three-quarters of an arena booing. You have one quarter cheering loudly from that double that Whitson just had because they thought it was a foul. I love the team defense. This is the only chance Middle's going to have of stopping the bigs, and I thought that was clean. Me and too. on the ball. Yeah, didn't see a foul there. I'm finally agreeing with D. Cantor in her career. Blue Raiders without a point in over four minutes after a quick start. Wheeler off the screen, and that's another offensive foul as Morrow went down, absorbing the charge. And number one on Wheeler. Lots of high on ball screens, and Kim Mulkey told Morrow, if we need to switch out because you are that good, that quick with your feet, and that's what we're seeing right now with these charges drawn. They're beating middle to the spot and drawing these calls. Nice tier pole, really great at taking a charge as well. She's taking like 30. He's powering away downstairs, but a misfire there. They have bothered her on the interior. 12-7 LSU. Wheeler looking to cut into the early advantage. They have the mismatch down low if they can get it to Kropowski, but they missed her. Wheeler taking it out around midcourt with a shot clock to seven. Wheeler on the drive and kick. Gregory got it from the corner. Jaylee Gregory knocking it down. She's taken 328 shots for the year, 250 from three-point land. That's a player who knows her strengths. <laughs> you talked to a coach in the last 24 hours who said her development's been amazing. Last year, Paula gets it. She will hit the triple. So now both sides beginning to heat up a little bit at the end of the first quarter. The last possession down, Kim Mulkey not happy with her defense because she does not want them coming off the shooters on the outside. Wheeler can't bury it. Rebound comes to Grabowski. Another big from Russia at 6'5". Middle Tennessee does a great job on the international front recruiting. Here's Scott to the baseline. Kind of a wild shot, but draws the foul. Van Lift came over to try and stop her on that baseline. And last year, Paula picks up the foul. Well, Wheeler with the shot clock getting skinny. Finds Gregory spotting up because she pulled her defender and then answering it's LSU. Last year, Paula spotting up on the weak side for the open look. Paula hitting to the bench with two fouls. And Scott to the line, 79%. She missed both foul shots with three seconds to play on Friday, giving Marissa Russell a chance with a long heave at the buzzer. And coming off her hand, it looked like it had a chance to go. LSU by five. You see Middle Tennessee just trying to keep the ball handlers on one side of the floor. They don't want the ball reversal. Morrow outside the three-point line. Yes. Oh, she's getting it going. She's had some huge games this season. 37 and 16 against Virginia. 25 and 15 against Texas A&M. Well, Middle Tennessee knows they're undersized, and so they are willing to give up the outside shot to the bigs of LSU. And Anissa Morrow says, challenge accepted. 14 to three run. And an 18 to 10 lead. Wheeler trying to get beyond Van Lith off the window. Nice drive. Great drive going so fast, but she has just such great touch when she gets that deep to kiss it off the glass. There's a real confidence about Middle Tennessee. They may be an 11 seed, but they have great confidence in their ability to come here and win two games. On the leader, Johnson will draw the foul with 18 seconds to go in the quarter. Dave, your point, we, we talked to players and coaches about the first half on Friday. 
Offensively, they were not good. Shooting really poorly, but they were only in the locker room for five minutes, and they came back out, and I said to you, I said, look out. And I, when I asked the players and the coaches about that, they were like, there were no adjustments. We just reviewed the, the original game plan, and we started doing it, and we knew our offense would come alive. And so a very calm, collected coach. You don't see him lose it over there very often. Been at it a long time, and one of the most respected coaches in women's college basketball today. He's been talking about retirement. At times he's talked about it being imminent, other times he's backed off a little bit, so like a lot of people in their retirement age, he's not quite sure yet. Well, winning does that for you. I think so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You win games, you back <laughs> off that whole idea. It's an addictive feeling. He's been winning a lot. Double down screen here, looking to get Gregory a shot. She'll fire it, and banked it in. Didn't call it, but she'll take it. And a heave at the buzzer, well short, 20 to 15. Middle Tennessee, again, staying right there. They got off to a decent start, something they haven't been able to do very often this season. But it pays off here against the number three seed. Mark. We'll be right back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Time for our get more brought to you by Geico. Lanisa Mars is doing a little of everything for the Tigers. Off the bounce from the high post. Posting up strong, creating some space to put it up over the extended post player. And then when she's had space, she's measured up and knocked down the big three. Seven points already, but the defense is what she has always hung her hat on. There, beats the, beats the offense player to the spot to draw the charge. So look at her numbers. 21 points a game, third among active players. She's been that good, seven points, three rebounds so far today. More importantly, LSU only turned it over one time in the first quarter. I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. Message received from this coaching staff. The way they played Friday was not acceptable. We heard that from Kim Mulkey, and this team has responded so far in this game. Haley Van Lith, one of those who really struggled in game one, well off the mark on that pass, I guess, and it's going to be up and in. Angel Reese right there underneath the iron to lay that one in. Middle Tennessee was really focused on two areas. One was transition defense. The second was trying to keep LSU off the offensive glass. Loose ball, and that's going to roll on out. The officials will decide it's going to be LSU basketball. And that's four turnovers now for the Blue Raiders. Angel Reese leads the country in offensive rebounds. And it's because she anticipates so well, already sealing the defender off to get the O-board and put it in. Quick whistle here with 9.16 to go before halftime, just beginning the second quarter, 22-15. LSU, and that foul will go on. Grabowski, her first. Talk about the rebounding prowess of the Tigers. And why? They are bidding for a 30th win. Van Lift will be well short. Rebound taken away, though, by Morris. So tough underneath to lay it in. Haley Van Lift, a rough opener on Friday. Five turnovers, two for seven, and seven points. LSU early on doing a much better job hanging on to the ball. Wheeler off to Gregory. Coming on 24 points in round one. Pass is going to be tipped here to Scott. She'll hit it. That's a triple. Scott, who averages 12 and 6. She played 38 minutes on Friday. Angel Reese having a really hard time getting off an easy shot. It's Scott again. Not this time. Okay, Kowalski is 6'5", so that's one of the reasons I'm just struggling around the rim right now to complete her finishes. A great job by Tamia Scott weaving her way in and making this a four-point game. You see in the middle of the Blue Raiders here, and that's going to go the other way. That'll be on LSU. Now we're going Angel Reese at first. Middle Tennessee talked about it. They thought they could get some off-ball fouls against Angel Reese when she was going and cutting through the lane and setting screens. That time, mission accomplished. Middle Tennessee, their best win of the season came against Tennessee. 73-62, that was back in December. Wheeler trying to make a move, and that's an offensive. 
That'll go against Grabowski. That'll be her second. This is where the bigs for middle just have to let their guards work. They're moving, they get called for it. Not a lot of depth. They don't go deep on that bench. Right now, both bigs already get two fouls. Middle Tennessee had one sub play eight minutes in round one. It's not unusual for them. Another foul. They call it a tight downstairs. Our officials, D. Cantor, Talosa Green, and Tyler Tremble today. And that'll go against Gregory, number two on Jalen Gregory. So they're starting to get into foul trouble. And this is where I, what I was expecting. How would Middle handle the physicality of LSU? And so far, we're seeing a lot of fouls called against them. And that's a travel. Go Rosario with the turnover, the 6'6 freshman from the Bronx. So here come the Blue Raiders. Down by just four. Wheeler, a lot of iron, it won't drop. Morrow had the rebound tapped around, and another whistle against Middle Tennessee. And that will go against Courtney Whitson, a six-footer, her second. So Whitson now with two. Uh, we have Kowalski with two, as well as Boldereva with two fouls. And their 14th foul. LSU with every season ticket sold. The place is packed here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. Out for Marlowe. Long one coming. They get a second effort on a rebound by Williams, but that's going to be a travel. So now the turnover bug is coming back for Kim Mulkey after a pretty clean first quarter. And this is where it's about the focus. And if I'm middle right now, I try to set screen after screen after screen. Because I've already started seeing some slippage in terms of how LSU's playing defense in the half court. Jalen Gregory gets deposited in the paint. And Leah Del Rosario pick up another foul. She had four fouls in six and a half minutes on Friday. Not the way you want to have your NCAA debut if you're Del Rosario. On the drive, Wheeler and another whistle. And she'll be headed to the line. She's typically an outstanding foul shooter at 86%. Now we go against Haley Van Lith, her first. So it will be two shots for Wheeler. Conference USA Player of the Year. And drops in number one tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Caitlin Clark in Iowa hosting West Virginia in a second round game from Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. Also available on ESPN, the app. It's a 7 0 run. And Tennessee within two. And then Tennessee looking to try to deny Flyvate Johnson the ball now in the half court. Johnson on Gregory will lift the triple and well short. Rebound. Loose on the deck. And another whistle. A lot of fouls piling up here at this stage of the contest. Will go against LSU. And that's on Morrow, number one. Well, as long as Middle can withstand getting too many players in foul trouble, this pace now favors them because it's going to slow LSU down from their transition game. It allows Middle to ex try to execute in the half-court offense. The monkey didn't want Flajay Johnson coming out of the game. She tried to come back in. The official was like, no, you stepped out. So she has to wait till time comes off the clock to get back in this game. The Raiders with an opportunity to take the lead here on LSU's floor. Two-point attempt. That won't drop. Rebound knocked around. Brown has it. She's come off the bench pretty early for Rick Ensel. He did not appear in the game yesterday or two days ago. Wheeler with a triple. Short. Rebound comes out high. They'll get another crack at it. And what you're seeing from middle right now is with the three-point shot opportunities, they're not running to the rim. They're running to the mid-range area, and that's how they're getting a couple of these offensive rebounds. Gregory will catch and fire. And again, got a good look, but couldn't bury it. Those were shots that she was hitting on Friday. Morrow in transition. 
spin and the dump down and the finish by Angel Reese and one. And that's the Tigers attack right there. And it's starting with the pace. They were pushing tempo in transition. You see Morrow trying to create off the bounce, realizes she's double teen and Angel Reese is running down the floor, feeds her partner, and then draws through the contact with two points. Foul on Jayla Gregory, her third. That's a giant part of the offense heading to the bench. And speaking of giant, that means Boulder Raver is coming back in the game at 6-6. Looking for help. Trying to get it to Wheeler. Finally did bounce it. 520 to go here before the break in Baton Rouge. Bolareva steps back for a three. And got it. She can hit that shot. She makes 44%. Absolutely. And because Wheeler's so good off the bounce, Reese was worried about her, and that's why Bolareva was open at the three. One point game. Morrow. Wheeler wants to push it. Every opportunity on the attack will lay it in. And Middle Tennessee has jumped in front on a 12-2 run. 27-26. Williams around it out. That looked like a shot they did not need at that point. Absolutely. I was just going to say, LSU needs to get the ball in the paint. Get it to either one of their bigs and let them try to go to work and try to draw another foul. And that would really put Middle Tennessee in a compromising position. And once again, LSU with a choppy offensive performance. This is a powerful scoring machine. 86, 87 points a game. They get to the line. A ton. They got to the line to shoot 31 foul shots against Rice the other day. Van Lift got a good look around and out. She just has not been on her game yet in this tournament. Wheeler to the big. Well, the rainbow with a finish. 29-26, Middle Tennessee. Rick Ensel told his team in the locker room, your grandkids are going to read about what you did. Williams putting on the brakes and too strong. Wheeler so quick to the other end. Five Scots. Rebound knocked around and finally controlled by Johnson. That was a great job by Flazay Johnson to keep the ball alive so she could get the rebound and then push tempo and draw the foul. And a blocking foul. They'll get Wheeler for that personal. Well, Middle Tennessee's getting the stops on defense, and that's allowing them to get out in transition. 14-2 run, and it's been spearheaded by the point guard Savannah Wheeler. Ball in her hand, the crossover, the kiss off the glass for two. She pushes pace yet again, and this time finds Bovareva for the easy two. who continues to dominate the stage here in Baton Rouge. Rick Ensel's three-year-old granddaughter, who is amazing. LSU to the line. LSU with an 89% win probability coming into this game. And yet it's Middle Tennessee up by two or three, 20 to go before halftime. You would have thought people would have learned after Friday not to take Middle Tennessee lightly because this is a well-coached team. They're great defensively. They take you out of what you want, and they make you defend when they have the ball. I'm eager to see the adjustments LSU starts to make coming out of the break. Uh, reaching foul there by Anissa Morrow. She'll pick up number two, and Kimoki not too pleased by that. Her team started out this quarter two for four. They're one for seven since then. Shot selection is a big part of this right now, and that's the bad shots have allowed Middle Tennessee to get out in transition, and then the turnovers as well. It just really annihilate any momentum that LSU started with. We are seeing some frustration on the faces of the LSU players. Morrow picking up that foul. Went over to the bench, not too pleased with herself. Angel Reese back on there. Middle Tennessee, no back down in these Blue Raiders. They lead it 
this is a Middle Tennessee team that watching them again yesterday, they respected LSU, but they expected also to win. They believe in themselves, and it doesn't matter the deficit. They're going to stay true to who they are, and they know they can come back or they can extend any lead. Rattling home, Fly J. Johnson will nail that one. Name second team all SEC. And again, having another good game, she has 10 points. I really think she's the X factor if LSU's going to make a run to Cleveland this season. Now, player down there, and that's going to be Granham hitting the deck. And 2.28 to go in the corner. They're going to go take a look at this. And that was as the play began to develop heading toward the other end. She went down and hit the deck. A 6'3 junior from Canada. He's getting some minutes here in this first half. Did not play at all the other day. And so this will be under review. And here it is as we go to break. Del Rosario gets the rebound and leads with that elbow. That's why the whistle blew. All right, so this foul on Del Rosario under review we bring in lisa mattingly our rules expert only 18 final fours lisa what did you see here well guys i think this is an unnecessary act you know she throws the elbow back while the ball is in she's not protecting the ball in my opinion uh, so i think it's an unnecessary act uh and i would have deemed this an intentional foul uh, but obviously the official saw something else and, and just deemed it a basketball play um, and we'll give the possession back to Middle Tennessee right there at the spot. Well, Dee Cantor just came over to chat. What did she tell you? Well, I asked Dee straight. I said, Dee, why wasn't it more? And she said, we didn't see anything intentional. She was just clearing through. That's why we just called the foul and didn't raise it to the intentionality. All right, so if you're asking my opinion, I agree with Lisa. I agree with Lisa. That's why I asked Dee point blank, why not more? So LSU catches a break. And here's Wheeler out high. Middle Tennessee leading the number three seed in this region. On the drive, well, it's a tough angle, and it gets down for Tamia Scott. Tamia Scott is so good when she can get going downhill with that right hand. Usually gets all the way, but that time didn't need to. She could be a star in any game. She's had a couple of games where she's dropped in 26 points and led them in scoring. And let's sealed off, and that's a double dribble. Picked it up, brought it down. And it starts with the drill penetration, Savannah Wheeler. The defense sucks in, and that gets the defense closing out. And so Tamia Scott knows they're chasing. She puts it on the ground for that pull-up jumper. Fourth turnover of the quarter for LSU, coming off 24 turnovers in round one. Off the iron by Wheeler, they'll get a second crack at it. Scott's been so active. She'll step in. It won't drop. And here come the Tigers. On the run and laid off the iron by Reese, who's really had a funky first half. Absolutely. And I was about to applaud them because that's what they need to do is push tempo. Scott will switch that in from three-point land. 36 to 30. There goes Angel Reese to the other. Another missed layup. There's a list of those for the Tigers. That's going to be a traveling violation as Whitson gives it away. She's about to line up a long three. Well, it starts again with Savannah Wheeler pushing pace, and Scott spots up on the wing. Defense is late to get out there, and the sophomore's loving it. Middle Tennessee outscoring LSU on their own floor, 21-10 to 10 in this quarter. And they had the big second quarter against Louisville on Friday. It's a team that it almost feels like they feel you out in the first. And they make the necessary adjustments, and then now they're clicking in the second. He's left open, not her shot. It rims out. So some of the stars for the Tigers, who have led them all season long, are not playing well here in the first half. And this is where you got to have both mental as well as physical discipline. Don't take the shot You're, the opponent wants you to take, and that's what I'm seeing from LSU right now, which is feeding into the Middle Tennessee game plan. Wheeler, very dangerous shooter, gave up the dribble. Shot clock down to six. Wheeler gets it back and traveling. Tried to slam on the brakes, but took too many. Well, the plan was to drive and kick, and Flajay Johnson did a great bluff at her, which is why she killed her dribble and then got caught with nothing to do. 
And we say it again, Middle Tennessee, a very confident team. The last time they tasted a loss was December 30. Van Lift with seven seconds before halftime. Williams is going to drive it, stop, pop, and hit the shot and draw the foul. Michaela Williams, that's a lift the Tigers desperately needed right before halftime. And you see the overload by LSU. Michaela Williams just elevates, hangs just long enough to draw the contact, and you see how important that bucket was for the Tigers. Williams 79%. And that's going to be lots of iron. It pops out. Rebound free. That's flung down the other end. That will end the first half. One and a half for Middle Tennessee. A 21-8 run to end the half. LSU with their fewest second quarter points all season long. Held to 12. So this outstanding story for the Blue Raiders continues. Marvelous first half for them here in Baton Rouge. Right now, let's go to L back in the studio. NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One back in Baton Rouge. And how about this? Middle Tennessee, halfway to a monumental NCAA tournament upset, not to mention the Sweet 16. David Christie with you. How did we get to this point? Because Middle Tennessee has outplayed the reigning national champs. Well, I think they've been great on the glass. They're plus seven in the game already. And just as important for them was transition defense. They've held LSU to just two points so far. Let's give you a look at our Invesco game track. Give you some more information if you're just tuning in on how we got to this point. Second half about to get underway. Those guys right now know. They know they're in a game. Their, their only answer is going to be rebounding and transition. Because you showed you're more skilled. You showed you're better in the half court. Their answer is going to be rebounding and transition. You cut that out, you go to the Sweet 16. Got it. Hey, I told you I'm going to write books about this team. Yeah. It's like our 160 all year. We got three more quarters left. This is where we go. Let's go. Let's go. Tom Hodges, the assistant coach, talking about skill level and the belief that the Blue Raiders have the advantage there as we head into the second half here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. And I think this first three minutes are really important for both ball clubs. What adjustments has LSU made, especially on the offensive end? And one adjustment already you're seeing last year, Poa start this quarter for LSU. Off the window by the 6'6 junior from Moscow. Boldareva, who can really be a lot to handle underneath, averaging 15 and 9 for the season. And also hit a 3 for you, which he did in the first half. And her link just alters shots as well. And you see, she's in drop coverage off of the high up ball screens. Great roll by Reese. Andrew Reese tripped up. Had a really tough goal of it in that first half. She has scored for 17 in the tournament. Well, Bodoreva just posts up well and then uses her length to get the separation and get the two. So a creeping issue here, though, for Middle Tennessee is foul trouble. Savannah Wheeler, their star, just picked up her third foul. So their backcourt's in trouble all of a sudden. Morrow on the move, trying to hook it up there, left it short. Shot selection is paramount for LSU this second half. I thought when Middle went on a run in that second quarter, it was really bad shots that allowed Middle to get out and run. Now look, the elephant in the room is certainly what is going on off the floor. And the Washington Post story about Kim Mulkey, which is pending right now, that's going to be swished in by Wheeler. And whether or not that is having an effect on what we've seen by LSU here in two games now, not just that first game where they turned it over 24 times. Reese going tumbling down, tripped by her own player. And here's Gregory, who can't connect. And Reese is wide open on the other end. A dribble down and she'll lay it in. And a timeout on the floor as we get the third quarter underway. And Middle Tennessee bidding for this upset of the reigning champs. Well, Angel Reese didn't finish off of the easy one. Cherry Pickin gets the lead pass for the two. Much needed points for LSU. So much. 
much at stake for Rick Issel and his program seeking the 31st win, which would be a program record, seeking the first Sweet 16 berth in program history, not to mention 21 consecutive wins, and trying to knock off the reigning champions. I've been in nothing but impressed by Middle Tennessee this entire weekend. This is a locked-in team on both ends of the floor. They've got great ball IQ, and they are led by Savannah Wheeler, who has her team playing really well right now. A sold-out crowd here trying to get going, and a whistle at 8-10 to go here in the third. On the shove, they put Wheeler on the deck. That'll be number two on Angel Reese. Meanwhile, Kaylee Van Lith, one of the starters, the 5-9 grad, on the bench, and she has been very emotional, inconsolable at the end of that bench. Not starting the second half. She's had a very rough tournament to this point. Well, it's well documented. Heavy Van Lith came to learn under Ken Mulkey and to hopefully compete for a national championship. So I'm sure she's not happy at all not to be on the floor right now. Williams at the elbow, and that'll go down. And Kayla Williams, a freshman, very smooth there. She has six. And here comes the crowd in a big way for the first time. Pull on Wheeler. She gets right by her, but can't hit it. Tiger offense is something else when it gets rolling. When will that happen? Well, and I'm just watching LSU run in transition. You've got four players jogging. There's no way you're going to get the advantage. Credit Middle Tennessee for sprinting back. Johnson out of the double tomorrow. No. Wheeler grabbing a rebound. A 5-6 guard. Poked from behind by Flage Johnson. Poa sends it up to Angel Reese. And she's denied as it's flicked out on a terrific block by Tamia Scott. And no foul. The Blue Raider fans love the defensive effort. Well, the second possession this quarter where Angel Reese gets lucky because she's cherry-picking. But this time, Scott hustles back. I think got a little contact there, but no call. Inbounded, and now a foul as Johnson hits the deck hard. And will go to the line. with a foul or third. Well, I said it earlier, I think Flaugé Johnson's the X factor for LSU. Again, it's the out-of-bounds play, taking advantage of the speed and size. Flaugé Johnson draws the foul. Flaugé from Savannah, Georgia, makes 76%. And for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for a 90 NCAA championship. LSU behind Johnson has crept to it in three of Middle Tennessee. Whips it back to Wheeler. Stolen away by the Tigers. That's Fly J. Johnson opening up the second half with a lot of energy. Reese downstairs doubled up. They're going to swing it for Williams. Got it. This game is tied on a 9 nothing run. Listen to this place. I can't hear you, Dave. That's the problem. It's so loud. Scott has it taken away. Williams with a head of steam. LSU wants the lead back. Angel Reese going up strong, and she'll draw the foul as she picks up the rebound. Tied at 41. Take a look at the ball movement. Well, this PMAC crowd is in it now because the offense is being selfless. Extra pass there. Poet Williams for the huge three. Boulder Raven with her third foul. This is fast becoming a serious issue for a Blue Raider team that doesn't play many. You have four players now for Middle Tennessee with three fouls. I'm eager to see does it affect how they're playing the half-court defense. So the Tigers trying to grab the lead. Reese will zip it cross-court for Williams. She'll let it fly. Wasn't in rhythm on that one. Gregory, who's in some foul trouble in the first half, back for Wheeler. Wheeler 
just keeps on trucking. Second effort. Scott can't hit it. Last tier pull off. Johnson. And a foul. A blocking foul here against the Blue Raiders. LSU came back, storming back to tie this game. Well, it's pace right now by LSU. Poa with the pass to Flaget, who's sprinting in transition to draw the foul. LSU last led at 26 to 25 with about five minutes to go in the second quarter. And they're back on top now. 42-41. Middle Tennessee with assistant coach Nina Davis on their bench who starred for Kim at Baylor and she had the LSU scouts. And did that pay off in the first half? Here's the drive and the scoop and a foul as well as Scott took the hit. And she'll be at the line looking for a three-point play. And Nina loves it. Well, for anyone who thinks this stage is too big for Middle Tennessee, they coaching staff said, we love when the crowd gets loud. And Tamia Scott answers with a big two-in transition. And it's going to the free throw line for the and one. Can't connect. So it's the Blue Raiders by one. Middle Tennessee continues to ice the on-ball screen. Back for Morrow in traffic and denied. Boulder Rayleigh is a terrific shot blocker. Near 100 blocks this season. Turning to fire Whitson. No. Rebound tip to Poa. Angel Reese. Off for Flage Johnson. Running the offense here. It's so loud in here that you had three different assistant coaches echoing Kim Mulkey's offensive call to get her team in a half court set. Johnson puts it to the deck, trying to dribble through and takes a foul. That was with eight on the shot clock, 421 to go. In the third, it has been a wild third quarter. Back and forth we go. Middle Tennessee up by one. Kim Mulkey called that timeout early in the third. The defense for the Tigers have picked it up. Seven of their ten points in this quarter coming off Middle Tennessee turnovers. They've been active with quick hands. They've been pursuing in defense. They've been active. They've deflected. They've gotten out in transition. Already now six points in transition. They've been selfless. They've been much more connected on the offensive team. Johnson offensive end. There's been a big part of that, too. And she is at the line to drop in that one and another one coming. Meanwhile, Foul trouble for Middle Tennessee. Jalen Gregory, huge part of their offense at 24 points in round one. She has four. And another whistle here. Gregory with four. Boulder Raven has three. Wheeler three. And Scott three. And so Grabowski will take a seat. That's her third foul. And that will put Anissa Morrow to the line. Gregory continuing to sit here. And LSU, with one of the top players, the foul line, an 83% shooter. And the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues on CBS, TBS, and TNT. For more information on the tournament games and times, go to NCAA.com. Laura making one of two. Reese pucks away to rebound. So this one tied at 43 in the third quarter at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. Entry gets into Reese. Great pass for Morrow. LSU back in front, a 14-2 run. And this is what I mean by a much more connected team on the offensive end. The extra pass there off of the double team led to the easy two. Jada Grant and the junior playing a lot of minutes in this one for Middle Tennessee, and that'll be a foul on Pola, and she's in foul trouble. And that'll put Wheeler 
to the line. That's number three. Angel Reese draws the double team. Just a quick shovel pass to Anissa Mara, who's streaking to the rim on the weak side. Great unselfish play post to post for two. That's a point that Kim Mulkey made after their win, that ugly win on Friday. She said, too much selfishness. And now Haley Van Lith is going to finally get back into the game as Poa will eventually come out with three fouls. 3.42 left in the third. And that'll go down for Savannah Wheeler. There's something to watch for Middle Tennessee now is there's talent on this bench, but they don't play a lot together in game action. We talked about how you've got three of the top minute getters in the nation on Middle Tennessee. How does the offense flow now the rest of this quarter, especially until Rick Enzel can get his starters back in the game? Tigers by one, followed away by Williams and nothing but net. Michaela Williams, the freshman. Little Tennessee, the only D1 team with five players with a thousand minutes this season. They don't seem to wear down. That's going to be a foul on LSU. And no, it's not. It's going to be a jump. And they've got the ball on the possession arrow. Well, Coach Insel, his team, he talked about it before the game. He said they're going to write books about this team. And as you get another look on the tie up. And they've got three minutes left in the third to write another chapter. That pass sailing. Reese goes for the save and out high for Morrow. Yeah, that was an overload play to get Angel Reese the lock for the easy two, but the pass wasn't on the money. Johnson got a good look and the triple. Well, she has shown up for this game. Flagey with 17. And suddenly LSU get a little bit of wiggle room on a long run. And it started with the defense. And even right now, you force another turnover. Johnson to drive it and blocks. Oh, Raven hit that stanchion really hard, too, after the block. And she got right back up. She is running full speed there. It's Flage Johnson and Boulder Ravens just measuring it up the whole way. Relieved to see both these players get up because Boulder Ravens hit the stanchion really hard. Well, she's been really good on the out of bounds execution so far today. That time, pass not on the money yet again. 2.25 left in the quarter. Round two. Here in the Albany region. Number two is said to be a murderer's row, the toughest region in the tournament. Over the top, Angel Reese will dribble down, and she'll draw the foul. And that's like clockwork. This is a team that attempts 27 foul shots a game. That'll go against Baldareva, her fourth. Angel was led to the weak side, and she had the easy bucket if she would have continued to the left, but was able to at least get the foul and get to the free throw line, which at this point for Middle Tennessee is the biggest issue they have on the floor. 73% foul short shooter Angel Reese, and drops in number one. Second year in a row leading the SEC in both scoring and rebounding. And another one coming for the All-American. D. Cantner stepping in and talking with Talisa Green. And a little bit of positioning here. And Angel's about to take up a spot and she's got another foul shot coming. So, uh, brilliant move by Angel Reese. She's literally setting a screen knowing that the free throw's not going to be shot until she gets back to, the, to that spot. And it was all about positioning. They were trying to get an advantage, both teams, in terms of the box out. And she nails that one. So she has 10, along with 10 rebounds. So another double-double for her. That is 14 straight for Angel Reese. A handoff for Wheeler on the drive. Yes. And the save by Van Lith as she went sailing out of bounds. Getting into this third quarter pretty late. Middle Tennessee was trying to get a timeout after that bucket, and they just didn't give it to him. Mm -hmm. 
Van Lith giving up the dribble cross court for Johnson. Under two minutes here in the third. Morrow to attack. The pass batted around. Johnson got it back. Shot clock's at one. She'll get it up there and hit the shot. Fifty-five forty-seven. Bolareva. Oh, what a difficult shot. Somehow got that to go. Reese was all over her. LSU, by the way, has scored on their last seven possessions. Their offense is clicking. But they are in a fight here at another whistle with 59 seconds. Let's see who they get on this. If that's Paul Raymond, that's number five. And it is on the 6'6 junior. Anastasia Bolareva has fouled out of the game. So their best big is done. They're very emotional about it. Now Friday against Louisville, a big part of the reason they won with 11 points, 12 rebounds, three blocks. They're trying to slow down Angel Reese. That is a tough assignment. He drops in number one back to the foul and we've talked about how good LSU has been here down the stretch and there's contact there probably better acting by Angel Reese to draw that foul Angel who has a very popular television commercial running for really good chicken here in town they've got 58.2 the officials stopping play for a moment that emotion just pouring out of Anastasia there. We've talked about how connected this Middle Tennessee team is, and it's a family atmosphere. And this young lady's been so instrumental on both ends of the floor for them the entire season. Eager now to see how Middle Tennessee responds. Very, a very emotional game. We saw Haley Van Lith earlier just about in tears, and she'll commit a foul here. Trying to slow down Wheeler, her second personal. So 44.9 to go in the third. Quite a recovery here by the Tigers on their home floor. When it has been this end of the floor that got them back in the game. They have taken away what Middle Tennessee had success at in the first half. They've beaten them to spots in terms of closeouts. And another defensive stop here by the Tigers. And they've got numbers. Morrow will give it away and block from behind. Terrific stop there by Tamia Scott. The Raiders have done that two or three times in this game. In but don't break. Tamia Scott just hustles in transition to get her second block in the game. Both blocks, rim protection in transition. Six of them for Middle Tennessee. Scooping on the other side of the iron. That'll roll in for Angel Reese. So it's up to ten. Well, this crowd has been magnificent here in the second half for LSU. They have been a factor. Poked away. Their effort has gone through the roof since halftime. Defensive effort has been really nice by LSU. And we've talked about how good they've been in the half court. I think a big part of that is they've been in front of Kim Mulkey from an offensive perspective. She's making the play calls now, and they're all on the same page. And Lisa Morrow still down and now getting some help. 11 and a half seconds to go in the third. Remember, Middle Tennessee was down 18 to Louisville in round one. They rallied to win. Fourth biggest comeback in this tournament history. Middle Tennessee will have the ball. And Gregory will get it in. Final seconds of the third quarter. Van Lith, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Van Lith went down. And that's going to go on Wheeler. Actually, it's going to go on Grabowski, and that's going to be number four on her. 
Plenty of time here for LSU. I'd be surprised if we don't get a high on ball screen. And you see Angel Reese there now. Dan Lift with a long one off the front of that iron. And that'll do it for the third. And a great third quarter for the reigning champions. Middle Tennessee scored the first five points of the quarter, and then LSU outscored them 27 to 8 to close out that third. Well, it's a high octane offense. They got it rolling. And they've got the lead here as we head for the fourth quarter in Baton Rouge. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Baton Rouge, where this has been Flaugé Johnson's half. Why? The spiritual leader, the emotional leader, she got her team going, and it started with the defense, active, getting the pokes, getting the blocks, getting the stops, and then that allowed her team to get out and transition. Flaugé Johnson with a big three, and she is excited, but then the biggest shot in the third. Shot clock going down. No worries, because Flaugé Johnson's on fire with 19. Sophomore out of Savannah, Georgia. She has been the tip of that spear. LSU rarely looked like themselves on Friday. In that third quarter, they looked like the Tigers. And what I like is they got back to doing what they had been doing so well throughout the month of February, earlier in March, and that was defense, and that was getting the ball in the paint. This is a team that has been averaging 43 paint points a game. Finally, they're getting back to their roots and executing. Middle Tennessee looking to cut into this lead, just getting started in the fourth. And do they have another comeback in them? Wheeler, Whitson, here's Scott. Shot clock down to three, and it rims out. LSU scoring 27 points in that third. Tying the second most allowed by Middle Tennessee in any quarter this season. And they really hang their hats on defense. Morrow with a touch. And downstairs for Angel Reese for the bucket. And now the Tigers beginning to open things up here. They've been patient on offense. That time was just a great read. They know they have mismatches around the floor and they're starting to take advantage of them. Gregory has been in foul trouble most of the afternoon. The handoff for Scott. Getting into a wall of defenders. It comes free. Shot clock's a factor. It's down to two. They don't see it. And they will not get a shot off in time. LSU with some championship defense. Eighth turnover of the half. So look at the turnover graphic and how LSU has cleaned things up. I mean, it was dismal in round one with 24. They won the game anyway. Van Lift getting it inside on Reese. She'll swing it. Williams off a fake and a foul. Uh, to me, a Scott. And number three on Scott. That was in the act of a three-pointer. And number four on Scott, and it'll put Williams to the line to shoot three, a 79% foul shooter. And this is where LSU really lives at the foul line. They shot 31, made 22 against Rice the other day. So Michaela with another one coming. Two-time Louisiana Gatorade High School Player of the Year. And for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Dave, you hit it on the head. I mean, 20 points a game come from the free throw line from LSU. That time, another three opportunity. And it needs to be stated again, this crowd has played a very active part and LSU second half performance. That'll be off the front of the iron and kicked away for a second chance. Plays packed to the gills. Wheeler on the spin, denied by Angel Reese. With the rejection.
The All-American with another touch and draws another foul. Angel Reese has come alive here in this second half. She's demanding the ball in the low post. In this last possession, Angel Reese gets the block, but credit Anissa Morrow's screen on the ball defense of why Reese was able to get there. And then Reese comes down the other end, demands the low post pass, draws the foul. Where she had an absolutely sensational tournament last spring. That's really where her popularity, her celebrity skyrocketed, ending with a national championship. And try to get back there. It's going to be a tough road if they can do it in a killer region. They got UCLA, you got Iowa. It is a tough, tough region. Absolutely. But the bottom line for LSU right now is they need to focus on themselves. They need to stay true to who they have been, and that starts with the defense and then play with pace. Foul there by Haley Van Lish. She'll pick up the personal. That's her third. And of course, there are distractions and gigantic distractions. So their mental and that mental focus you're talking about is really going to be tested. Absolutely. I was excited for today because I was really eager to see how would they respond to their poor performance on Friday. And then everything came out about the potential of a Washington Post story. You wonder, could it actually galvanize this team and get them on a true run to the Final Four? Yeah, let's step them through, but she'll draw the foul. Just over seven minutes to play here. LSU is taking command of this game. It was very much in doubt when they were down at halftime. Then they were down seven in the third. To be a Scott Sport foul. And Van lifts to the line. So that's it for Scott. Foul number five on Scott. An excellent foul shooter, 82%. The Blue Raiders have had starters in foul trouble in this game. And now losing starters, two of them have had to leave the floor now after fouling out. An 8 nothing run to open the quarter now for LSU. Well, I've been eager to see how does Middle Tennessee's offense, how much is it affected by now two starters on the bench. Again, a lot of talent on this team that just haven't played a lot together in game time. Gregory off target. And another rebound for Morrow. Blage Johnson really been their biggest star today. And another foul here against Middle Tennessee. They needed her energy. They needed her bounce. They needed her points. I said it, X Factor for this team, and luckily they are fed off of her intensity as well as her scoring here in the second half. The junior from Chicago who transferred from DePaul just to be part of this. It's going out at LSU and trying to win back-to-back -back titles. 16 points, 10 rebounds a game. She's a star in her own right. And smooth out the line where she makes 83%. Dave, those, that was 20 and 21st free throw of this half for LSU. And how about this? The lead balloons to 20 with this great second half effort by the defending champions. It took them a little while to look like LSU, but they showed up here at home. And they've really done this with defense as much as anything. And another foul here. And the third quarter in particular, I don't know if you call this a run, but they have outscored Middle Tennessee 37 to 8. I would call that a run. I'd call that a marathon. And Dave, you hit it on the head. It started with the defense. They picked it up. They've rotated better. They've had better on-ball pressure. And that has frustrated Middle. And then you just seen the foul fest, unfortunately, for Middle every time LSU has been able to get out and transition, especially. Reset the line for number one. So 19 for Angel. Give her 20. So what a difference for her from round one, where she made only one field goal. LSU has an awful lot of answers. 
Well, when you rebound the way they do, when you defend the way they do, it gives you such more of a margin of error. Wheeler with the bucket and a timeout. Rick Ensel. So the Blue Raiders will take one here. A little over six minutes to play here in Baton Rouge. And LSU with a 20-point lead on Middle Tennessee. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Time for today's Star Stories brought to you by Honda. Well, it started with Flage Johnson, who got her team ignited with the big three, the emotion. They fed off of it, did LSU. And then the shot to beat the buzzer just ignited this LSU crowd. And then Angel Reese started going to work. The seal for the high-low, the dump-off for the easy two. Angel Reese already with a double-double, 20 and 10. Eight of those coming from the free-throw line. Beating off this crowd, too, 12,632, packing the house. Here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center, Reese will turn and fire. How about LSU at the foul line in the second half? They have made 19 free throws in 23 attempts. And that is a mark of LSU basketball. On the drive, that shot won't go. And another whistle here with five and a half minutes to play. And we will head to the other end. Whitson will pick up number four. Foul trouble has been a huge issue for the Blue Raiders, just trying to hang with the Tigers here. And eventually, all that foul trouble wore them down. Absolutely. And we talked about Angel Reese's 20 points, 10 rebounds, but she's also drawn 10 fouls in this game. Anissa Morrow has drawn seven fouls, and that has really crippled the Middle Tennessee uh, roster. Well, she has 15. Look at the disparity there, but that's how LSU gets it done with their size, their athleticism, and they're smart about drawing fouls. Absolutely, and this is the Middle Tennessee team who likes to shoot the three, so not a lot of opportunities for them to draw fouls. Well, Rick Insel's had a great season, 30 wins. They haven't lost a game since December the 30th. But today in the house of the reigning champions, the second half, well, that changed everything. LSU was down seven. They were in danger. Now, Flage Johnson, a talented sophomore, refused to let them fall any further behind. And offensively and defensively took it on herself. Absolutely. And this is what Flage Johnson is so capable of, one of the best athletes in our game. And she put it all together when the Tigers needed it most. Well, that's a make Haley Van Lift really needed to see go through. And she has four points. Uh, this is going to turn out to be a dominating LSU performance. So all in the second half, the man did the Tigers wake up. And a tough shot there by Savannah Wheeler, 5'6", Brad. Talk about an outstanding career. Conference USA Player of the Year. Played all 40 minutes the other day. She never comes out of the lineup. Terrific career. And plays both ends of the floor. Over 2,000 point score in her career. This young lady is just so, it's been a pleasure to watch her. Her entire career, but especially this weekend. And she was the big reason they came from behind to knock off Louisville the other day. Beautiful spin by Mara, and she'll head to the line too. Well, another player on this floor has scored 2,000 points in her career and counting. And she, you see the footwork. Undersized post players, what's the label that has followed Anissa Mara her entire career? Well, she's embraced it, and she knows how to use her size and her footwork to her advantage. Beautiful spin move. So LSU back to the line. They have scored on nine of ten possessions in this quarter after taking control of the game in the third. Van Lith with the foul. Stops the clock with exactly four minutes to go. And Dave, I really believe the offensive execution has been so much better in the second half because Kim Mulkey has been getting her team in the sets that she has wanted to exploit the foul trouble issues of Middle Tennessee and mismatch issues. 
Well, they obviously played a very sloppy game in round number one with all those turnovers, but their practice yesterday, we were there for that, was incredibly focused. It's the practice that I've been accustomed to watching where players are locked in, and I thought Kim Mulkey's energy was also off the charts. Angel Reese will zip the pass here for Williams off the fake, steps back for a triple, got it. It has been some second half for these Tigers and their fans. Against a very good 11 seed in the Blue Raiders who had dreams of a monumental upset that is not going to happen today. Deflected back. And as it will draw the foul here with 3.06 to go, back to that triple. Well, LSU once again pushing pace, and Kayla Williams trails the play. When she didn't take the first three, I was hesitant about what she was about to do, but just beautiful rhythm three there for Michaela Williams. LSU has been so active in the passing lanes. Like a different team came out from halftime. Savannah Wheeler will launch and can't get it to go. They get a second chance. Whitson came over to steal the rebound. Well, in some ways, Dave, I feel like first half defense of LSU was indicative of December and January for this ball club. And then they picked it up in February, and that's exactly what we saw here in the second half. Disruptive and really took ownership and took control of the ball game. Got to get a shot in the air here. There's a heave with the shot clock winding down. Didn't touch a thing. And more good defense here for the Tigers. No let up at all. Outscoring Middle Tennessee in the second half, 47 to 17. Impressive. And again, facing an opponent that has won 30 games and won Conference USA by going 16 and 0, then won the Conference USA tournament, and then came from behind to knock off Louisville, a team that is used to going to Elite Eights being down 18 points and they had a seven point lead early in the second half of this game talking about middle tennessee and back came lsu tigers got me <laughs> well i think we'll always wonder what would happen if middle tennessee hadn't gotten to such foul trouble lsu's been on a 24 to 4 run since both of the fell out of this ball game well there's another graduate student courtney whitson who has fouled out and that is three starters filing out of the game for the Blue Raiders, to your point. Just a very emotional moment. And you know your career is coming to an end. Final seconds on the floor as an active player. It's tough to take. And they were really soaring after the upset of Louisville. And that great come from behind victory on Friday in round one. But now it's LSU at minute 55 from advancing to another Sweet 16. Angel Reese is going to head for the bench to a huge ovation. 20 and 11 for the All-American. Miller didn't touch anything. Johnson attacking the paint. Oh, what a tough shot. And that's the kind of day it's been for her. Kim Mulkey wanted a timeout. She wanted to go to her bench here. Everything is just going LSU's way. They're forcing shots. Big three there for Middle Tennessee. And the timeout's going to sub everybody out here. And a final minute of play, including Plage. A star turn for her today. She led the comeback. I mean, a lot of people around the country are going to look at this final score and go, well, that's just LSU blowing out another opponent. But that was not the case early in the third quarter. Again, this is a really good Middle Tennessee team. They're good on both ends of the floor. They came into today's game 10th in the nation in scoring defense. And hats off to LSU because they woke up big in the second half. 
Angelica Velez, the freshman on the dribble. And a whistle here. Both sides going to their bench here. And Savannah Wheeler, the 5'6 grad, has meant so much to this program, a magnificent career. Conference USA Player of the Year, the Conference Tournament MVP, 2,000 points. And we saw Matt Insel, the assistant coach, and of course his dad, the head coach. Matt's little daughter, Evie, has stolen everybody's hearts here, including everybody in our truck. Our production team. So much emotion this time of year. You have players' careers ending and players who have poured their heart and soul into a program, as we've seen from Middle Tennessee. And for the seniors for LSU, potentially their last time ever to play here in the PMAC. That's right, as far as a home game. But the tournament will continue. The Stars played like stars in the second half. I think there are plenty of observers around the country who are like, what, they turned it over 24 times, and they looked really sloppy on Friday, did not look like the reigning champion, but the reigning champion has shown up. Well, here's the bottom line. It doesn't matter how much outside noise there is, it's about the culture in the locker room. And I'm not sure exactly what was said at halftime, but this is a team that got refocused, and this is a team that what we saw in the second half can make a run to potentially get back to a Final Four. Well, it's a killer region, as we talked about Albany, too. But if they play like this, obviously they can beat anybody. We'll see if eventually they get South Carolina again. And that's it. LSU onto the Sweet 16 again. A fantastic second half for the Tigers, the reigning champions. They ran away. And they advance to the Sweet 16 for the 16th time in program history. They outscored Middle Tennessee 51 to 20 in the second half. They were down seven points. That quickly became a distant memory. Final score 83 to 56. Plage Johnson, the big start. Nice moment there with Kim Mulkey and Savannah Wheeler. Blue Raiders. Many of them in tears, and a hug there for her former star and assistant coach of Middle Tennessee, Nina Davis, who had a spectacular career at Baylor.